Hello, my name is Uri Josa, and um, I am part of the team of Health Rights Action. I work on community processes, um, group empowerment, uh, strategic processes. I am very pleased to be guiding you through the process of uh, collective strategies for social change. So if you want to follow me, let's go. If we, like Angela Davis stated, then we are convinced that we need to contribute to important local and global transformations, which bring justice and well-being for the many and put an end to oppression and discrimination. If this is what we want to do, we will find for sure important resistances. First, from the ones who are benefited by the status quo, who will oppose us. Second, by social groups who have been convinced that this is the only way things could work. And third, we will find resistances within ourselves. Our own life does not make it easy to dedicate as much energy as we believe we should. And maybe, and even more importantly, it is not so easy to do things right. We need to unlearn many oppressive or privileged attitudes that we've learned. To learn again in a fairer and more collective way and discover new capacities within ourselves. So addressing such resistances and the challenges to learn to work together require that we get organized in the best way possible. This is why in this video we dedicate time to how we can build collective strategies, meaning how to agree together to move in a common direction in order to achieve the collective goals. So please follow us while we clarify key elements for a collective strategy, which may bring us closer to the social transformations that we aim. Let's go. As we just said, due to the fact that the changes we aim for are very complex to achieve, we will need to involve many people and resources and coordinated action during a long time. And this is why we need to strategize. We need to agree in a common direction with different people for a specific length of time. So when we are willing to act together, the first question we need to clarify is why? What do we want to achieve at the end? If we go very general for now, as social movements, we have the goals to generate social change. We want a good and decent life for everyone. To have our rights respected, everyone's rights, with no exclusion. And we want to have a balanced relation with other living beings and our planet. And that's why we involve in advocacy campaigns, communication, mobilization, because we need change, because the systems of power and the cultural industries make the world go in a different direction than what we aim and think that is necessary. As a result of our action, we may be willing to change laws, policies, institutions, or we may be willing to generate a cultural change, a change of narrative among people and stakeholders so that people will understand and behave differently in front of a situation. And, or we may be willing to increase solidarity and mobilization in our communities. If we are willing to put now these elements in the language of strategy, we could say that a good and decent life for everyone, a balance with living beings and so on, is what we would call our vision, the way the world would look like once we achieved our goals. For example, the PHM, the People's Health Movement, defines in its People Charter for Health their vision like this. Now, generating cultural change, new laws, fair policies, new narratives would be what we call our strategic objectives. All of those changes that, once achieved, will make it possible to realize our vision. And the set of campaigns, advocacy actions, demonstrations, and so on, would be the actions, the strategic actions that help us achieve our objectives and, in the long term, our vision or our aim. In this scheme, there are still a couple of important steps missing. First of all, before acting, before having strategic objectives, we need to have analyzed and understood what is happening. What are the problems? What is the context? This is what we call a diagnosis. You know that. 
Such diagnosis is what gives us the impulse to get organized and try to solve the problems in front of us. So a good tool to work together on doing a good diagnosis is to make a problem tree. The problem tree makes us think and distinguish what is the problem, what are its consequences, and most important, what are its causes, going beyond what we see superficially and going deeper into systemic forces which cause the external problems that we are seeing in society. The problem tree helps us in our way to develop our systemic thinking, understanding that societal changes and oppressions are usually interlinked and have deeper causes than it seems apparently. A tool which is complementary to the problem tree is to make a map of actors or a power map. Whilst the problem tree allows us to think of the problems, the map of actors allows us to understand who is around us, what are those people's needs and positions, and how we can interact to reach the common goals. There are different types of such maps, but they have in common that they help us visualize the reality and imagine networking actions. A last but fundamental cornerstone we need to clarify is our way, our approach, how things should be done. Therefore, what are our values? What are our principles? When Gandhi, a leader in the of India, said his famous, there is no way to peace, peace is the way, he meant that non-violence was a principle to follow in order to reach the final goals, peace. So only non-violence can lead to peace. So it is fundamental that we are aware of our core values so that we ensure that always we act according to them. Grassroots empowerment, a shared solidarity, intercultural values, etc. Maybe some of those guiding principles are the basis of how we do things. Again, it is important to go beyond acknowledging our values. We need to learn how to bring them into practice. We need to question ourselves in order to learn how to decolonize our own behaviors, how to depatriarchalize our action, and so on. If we don't do things the way we believe they should be done, we will never see the world as we would love to see it. So a first summary of what a strategy is about would be like this. We first analyze and agree on what is the situation, the diagnosis, what are the problems, their causes, and also our strengths, our allies. When we know what are our problems and causes, we can clarify our vision, decide how we would want our reality to be. Then we also agree on how we would like to do things, what is our approach, our values, and we set the strategic objectives to reach the vision. Once we have the strategic objectives, we are ready to define actions that allow to achieve them. If we've done so, we have drawn the arrow that defines our direction and we can bond around it as a team, as a group or as a network. All of these elements are indeed dynamic and the process involves constant evaluation and decision making. And some people may prefer to see it as a circle. However, this image of a strategy as an arrow helps us to pass the idea of a clear common direction towards we would like to work together. Of course, the case we just defined is too general, too wide, to be useful. So let us go with an example which is more specific to see the key elements of a strategy in practice. We realize that people with underprivileged status in our country have a lower life expectancy that waiting lists in public healthcare are huge, both for primary care and for its hospital interventions. We go through a collective analysis and we agree that privatization of health has a big role on all of that, because resources are transferred to private companies that render bad public service on the one hand and offer high quality service on premium facilities for the wealthy people. Going further even, we see that those companies have good links with political parties and favorable laws and policies supporting that. That is clearly our starting diagnosis. If we aim as our vision, a society where people are healthy, also thanks to a good universal public health care system, we will agree that we need to set a strategy to change all of this, which involves first empowering and building power from the grassroots so that we all can achieve new regulations, a change in policies at national and international level to stop and dismantle the trends uh, of privatization of healthcare. We, the mobilized society, who is more aware of the rights 
and how they are not being guaranteed by the present system. And how are we going to achieve those crucial changes? With a set of articulated actions, which little by little bring us closer to our goals. Trainings for health activists, public uh, campaigns to raise awareness on the rampant privatization and its consequences, community work to build solidarity and capacities among our neighbors, meeting with members of the parliament, and so on. All these actions now go in a common direction. None of them will achieve per se the final goal, but all of them will be needed to produce changes that help us reach our goals and then our final vision. There are finally three key aspects in a strategy that we want to underline. First, the balance of long-term work with the short and medium-term victories. Second, the dimension of empowerment. And third, the need for adaptation and re-evaluation within our strategy process. Regarding the balance between long-term work and short and medium-term victories, a strategy aims at achieving difficult goals in the mid and long term. We cannot rush if what we want is real change. Real change takes time. However, when paths are long, people need results in order to stick together. That is why in our strategy, we need to ensure we gain little victories that we can celebrate and that give us energy and also credit to keep pushing forward. As an example, we may want in the long term to stop and reverse privatization. There is a long way to go for that, but maybe in our first year as coordinated actors, we may be able to organize a demonstration with some thousands of healthcare workers and have a good presence in the media. Or we can also organize some action within, the, within an hospital in order to oblige the direction, the management, uh, to reconsider some of the ways they are implementing policies from the government. That would be great victories in our way that we need to celebrate because celebration, acknowledgement of the own power and capacity is an important source of empowerment for groups. Empowerment. We don't empower people. People get empowered. Still, we can think of processes that allow people to learn capacities, to master tools, to acknowledge they have rights and how they can use them, and so on. And we totally believe in this statement by Ursula Le Guin. For it to be real, human beings need to recognize, activate, and organize their power, get empowered. I really think we aim towards the long term with a beautiful arrow, but sometimes a rock falls in the middle of our path and we need to change. We need to change our path, our strategy, and in a strategy, though keeping always the sense where we want to reach, we need to assess and reevaluate periodically what we have planned in order to keep it close to reality and therefore make it feasible. So if like Angela Davis, we are now going to change the things we cannot accept, we will need to be many, to have resources and to get organized with a common strategy. Are we ready? We can.